everyone. My name is Joanna Shawkinsey and I'm a medical laboratory scientist. Um, and as Paddy said there, I graduated from uh, GMIT in 2009 with a BSc in medical science. Um, so just briefly to explain to those people who maybe have come from schools a brief introduction as to what medical laboratory science is. Um, so basically, a medical laboratory scientist will work in a hospital laboratory and they undertake a diagnosis of patient samples, whether it be a blood test, a urine analysis, a tissue sample. So we're kind of a link between the diagnosis with the doctors and we're sort of behind the scenes working towards that diagnosis. So it's a very interesting area. Um, so just to give you uh, my career path to date. Uh, I graduated in 2009 with a degree in medical laboratory science and that was the foundation of my career. Um, as part of that degree in 2009 I uh, and students who are studying medical science here will have to do the same in their final year. Um, I undertook a research project at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota um, this is a very important part of your course and I would recommend that you think carefully about where you want to do this and what areas you want to research. Um, it is a very crucial uh, point in your building your career um, as it allows you to build on your research skills and it also allows you an opportunity to make links with people in the industry. Um, so it's very important that you kind of think about where you want to go with your career in, in the same time that you're thinking about your research project. So that was a fantastic opportunity for me and it's a huge thing to have on my CV and it has helped me in my career to um, maintain employment. So <clears throat> just to give you what I've been up to since I graduated from GMIT in 2009, uh, as Pauli mentioned, I undertook a master's in biomedical science at the University of Ulster in Coleraine. Now, those of you who are studying medical science will find that this is a good, this is a good master's to do because it's recognised by the Academy of Medical Laboratory <coughs> Science and also the Institute of Biomedical Science in the UK. So you have to be careful about these courses that you choose. You want to make sure they're accredited and that they're recognised. And just going back to the GMIT degree, I'd like to mention that it is accredited with both the Academy of Medical Laboratory Science and the Institute of Biomedical Science, which makes it um, easier in terms of employment if you want to work in the UK and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> following on from that, in 2011, I decided to undertake a, a postgraduate certificate in stem cell biology. And those of you who are studying medical science or in the area of life sciences will realize that this is a very topical area. And certainly it's a very, um, very crucial area in terms of patient treatment going forward and that was the reason that I took it because it's, it's kind of the next step from diagnosis is, is the treatment. Um, so currently I'm sort of at two different things at the same time. Um, I'm doing a part-time diploma in quality management with Excellence Ireland Quality Assurance which is taught here at GMIT <coughs> at night and uh, this is you know, in terms of laboratory work, you will find that um, it's very important that uh, uh, the laboratory work to a certain standard. In the case of the medical laboratories, they work to a standard called ISO 15189. Um, and it's important to ma maintain your quality throughout your work. And quality management has become a huge area in across all industries. Um, so it's very relevant <laughs> today. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my other diploma in tissue dissection towards the end because that will just fit into the end part of the presentation. Um, so just briefly to kind of give you a, a realistic view of what it is like to come out with a medical science degree nowadays. Um, I came out four years ago. I was quite fortunate in that um, I think it was August of 2009 I began working in biochemistry in Port Yonkla. Now I will say that you know, for prospective students and maybe students who are doing medical science and about to graduate or about to undertake your final exams or that, um, it is really important that you have an edge in today's world. It's important that you put yourself out there um, for getting a job. Nobody's going to come up to you and say, I have a job for you. You just have to, you have to really, really 
push yourself to get as many qualifications and skills as you can um, to make as many contacts within the hospital laboratories and to keep your options open and I would say to people who are about to graduate you know okay you're focused on exams but you need to focus on your future employment as well and I would have began work um, looking for employment probably midway through my final year at GMIT and it paid off it certainly paid off for me okay so then um, I was in Port Yonkel at that stage for about two months and then um, October 2009 I was very fortunate in that I secured employment at the histopathology laboratory here at Galway University Hospital and that suited me because I had specialised in histopathology and I was starting my master's and I was hoping to specialise in that area as well so that was, that was really fortunate. Um, at the same time as I mentioned I was doing my uh, part-time master's through distance learning now, distance learning, as you're probably probably all aware, it's a very uh, very good way of studying. I certainly found it very flexible, and if you don't want the hassle of having to travel, and if you want to kind of, you know, if you're if you're motivated in yourself and you you can do it on, I won't say on your own, but in the comfort of your own home, then it's a very good way of studying while working, and you don't, you know, you can work full time and have your salary and still study. So it's it's very good that way. Um, while I was doing that project, I worked with some of the cancer specialists in Galway University Hospital um, on the area of breast cancer research. We were looking at markers for metastasis, which is the spread of cancer. Um, I'll also be presenting part of this at the Academy of Medical Laboratory Science Conference, which will be held next Friday and Saturday. I don't know if any of the students of medical science are going to it, but it's certainly a good thing to go to, and it sort of keeps up to date with what's going on in the industry. Uh, just last year, October 2009, then, or sorry, 2012, I changed back to Port Yonkla. A position came up there, so I currently work there, and I'm still in the histopathology area. Um, this is just a brief sort of overview and I'll go into more detail again about uh, what goes on in the histopathology laboratory. Um, so there's a, a several different types of um, basically tissue that come into the laboratory. So when you think of histopathology you think about tissue, whether it be a mole that you have in your hand or you know you hear people about having cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, all that sort of stuff. So um, that's just an overview of what happens to the tissue itself. It's fixated, stained, and there's several different types of stains that may be used. Um, and at the end there, it just says, hand over to the, to the pathologist, just to make that clear that it is the medical doctors that make the diagnosis in his pathology laboratory. Okay, so, um, right, so this is just a kind of brief uh, overview of what happens in the histopathology laboratory. Um, so you get a specimen in and it's in a formaldehyde fits as if um, there's several processes. Sometimes people are confused as to why it takes so long if you have a lump removed or a mole removed from your hand or wherever. Uh, there's, there's so many different things that has to happen to the tissue. First of all, it's fixated in formalin, um, then it's dehydrated, cleared and infiltrated with wax. And this is an overnight process. The following morning it's embedded. Now I'll show you, it's very confusing if you're not familiar with the area. I'll show you a few pictures later on to kind of explain exactly what happens. And then the microscopical examination is the next part of it. So it is a bit of a, a rigmarole and it takes time. So just to kind of visualise it, that's what your sample would typically look like. It comes in in a formalin pot and it's uh, been fixed in formalin and you have to be very careful that you check with your criteria that your specimen is you know whatever he has to match the specimen has to match the form and you have to have certain criteria such as chart number patient all sorts of patients demographics date of birth name address etc okay so just um it's just a piece of tissue i put up to show you um what the effective formula is on a piece of tissue um, so it preserves the tissue and it enhances the staining and then to what actually happens is the formaldehyde forms cross links with the tissue coating. You can see there it's like that doesn't typically look like a piece of tissue you take out of uh, somebody. It's you know you can see it's a paler colour and it, the texture is also different. It's harder. 
Okay, so um, the processing is the next stage, and I, I don't want to really dwell on this too much. I mean, this is very technical, um, and I just want to kind of give you a visual of what goes on. So here you have um, here you have a cassette, and those pieces of tissues are in the cassette. Now that's actually an appendix which has been chopped up um, into the tip and two transverse sections, and that's another transverse section here and there. So that's the little block of tissue that would typically be used and that's popped into um, sort of the container and uh, onto the processor overnight. Uh, and that's what a typical processor would look like and you have your dehydration, clearing, infiltration and bedding. So that takes about 10 hours overnight and that would be, you know, that adds the turnaround time in the laboratories as well. Um, this is just a, an image of the embedding process. So we have the paraffin wax going in here and you have the wax block there. So you put the tissue in and you, the, the wax comes out here and then you cool it over here and you continue then and you cut. You, you can get a section on the slide there after the microtomy part of it. See the section on the slide goes into the oven, it's melted and at the end of the day you come out with something that looks like that. That's a hematoxin and eastern stain. Um, and you can make out various parts of the uh, morphology there. Okay, so just to kind of summarise what I've said there, um, you have, you know, just to give you a, an example, there's a picture of a heart, and then this is after fixation, and then this is the H&E slide. Um, here I just have a few examples. Again, I, I don't want to go into too much detail uh, for people that aren't familiar with the area. So this is a, an image of a cardiac... Um, this is an image of a piece of a heart from a patient suffering from primary, primary amyloidosis, which is a condition uh, involving the build of, of light chains and amyloid deposits in the body. Uh, now, this is more, um, in terms of the diagnosis, we would, and again, I don't want to dwell too much on the detail of this, um, this would be a typical immunohistochemistry stain that we would use, um, CD138. <coughs> In mature plasma cells and it's just an example of the level of uh, detail I suppose you're starting off with like a H and E slide and then depending on what uh, the initial diagnosis looks like you will go on and request what we what we call immunohistochemistry staining that's a big part of histopathology at the moment so the brown staining there would show positivity just to give you a sort of a, an overview and there's another marker light chain restriction and in prim primary amyloidosis as well. So continuing on then, this is uh, part of the, the techniques that we use in histopathology to aid the diagnosis of patients. So immunohistochemistry, as I say, it's a big area. And again, it's the brown staining that you're looking at there. And this was just some slides I took from uh, my master's project myself. And you can just see the benefit of you, if you like to just look at that area there, it's showing what we call lymphovascular invasion, which is a step towards the spread of cancer and metastasis, as it's known. And that is your H&E stain. And then you can see the immunohistochemistry stain, and it's a lot clearer. So you can see the benefit of it compared with looking at that. And then again, I have two markers there that I was working on for my research project. And you can see they're not as distinctive as the previous ones um, because they're you know, still in research. Um, which still, you can just briefly see that there's positivity there. Where you don't have it here. You don't have any staining. So it's the contrast. It's the brown staining you're looking at. And again, there we have it with the other marker I was working with. So you can see the brown staining. Not as clear as more established markers, but they're all the same. Okay, so <clears throat> the evolving role of medical scientists. So just for the school children that are school kids that have come in, um, I just want to briefly say that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a medical laboratory scientist. And what I studied was a BSc in medical science. And now maybe some of you aren't familiar with the area, but it's a, it's a very important area in medicine. And it's, it's basically the hospital laboratory. So if you have to go to hospital for anything, um, whether it be a blood test, a urine analysis sample, um, maybe something you have removed from you know, a mole or whatever, it is the medical scientist that helps to make the diagnosis. Um, so these are the people who work kind of behind the scenes in the hospital 
And if any of you are filling out CEO forms or anything like that, I would be very careful about, right, you know, it's medical science, it's not general science or anything else, it's called medical science. And you can look it up on the GMIT website and certainly at the end I'll give my email if anyone wants to find out more information about it or indeed contact the School of Science here. So um, I just want to give kind of, I suppose more for the medical science students here to kind of give you what's happening in the industry at the end. So the evolving role of the medical laboratory scientist, uh, certainly as I see it anyway, um, so I'm undertaking a dis diploma of extended practice in histological dissection. And what that entails is kind of traditionally you'd have a pathologist do this sort of work, a consultant pathologist or indeed a trainee uh, pathologist. And it involves like um, dissection of tissues. So for example, you have an appendix come in or a gallbladder or skins or things like that. So instead of like the doctor doing it, it's the medical scientist who would describe um, in great detail what they see grossly at the cut-up bench. And it's a very interesting area. And certainly if, if any of you are specializing in histopathology, I would highly recommend that you look into it and that you try and maybe you know, think about going to the UK because it's big in the UK and training in that area. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it over hopefully two years and I'll, be, I'll have a diploma of extended practice and at some stage there will be a post created which will be an advanced practitioner's post and a lot of your work then will involve <coughs> the, the dissection of specimens. Now I think I'll, I'll finish at that point because I hope I've kind of given a a clear view of what I'm doing in work and, and the career itself um, but I will take questions um, and, and just at the end as well just you know I was asked to kind of give people a, a little bit of advice of how to get on in the career and things like that and maybe you some of you are probably about to graduate or maybe in third year or second year and you're maybe a bit disheartened of what you're hearing in the media about public service pay cuts and the embargo on, on on employment and that kind of thing but um, I suppose advice like I was saying at the beginning um, it's very important like if you're on placement it's really important that you show that you know you're capable and that you work hard because you'd be surprised you know you will remember the students come through and the ones that are very helpful and the ones that are kind of switched on uh, as opposed to the ones that, um, that aren't so interested and you never know when you might be on an interview panel with one of those students and you will you will remember who stood out. So it's about kind of standing out in in your work and it's about continuing your, your education and as I mentioned earlier there, I you know, I went on and did a, a master's in biomedical science, a postgraduate certificate in stem cell biology and I'm now doing a, a <coughs> diploma in quality management and also just tissue dissection so it's very important because when you come out of college you know there might be 20 in your class and you'll all have a BSc in medical science so you, you kind of have to keep building on that and you know become more competitive and have an edge and you know if you get an, an opportunity to do a master's project or even a degree project try and get it published try and present it somewhere um, and and I just say keep up to date you know uh, keep up to date what's happening in the industry and attend conferences. So I'll take questions at that point because I think that's that's about it there now. Yeah. Joanne, thanks very much indeed.